Okay, the first tool we're going to use to practice making five is called the five frame. Now, you may be familiar with the with um, 10 frames, but a lot of times we start kids immediately off on 10 frames. But the first thing that we have to do is introduce the five frame to students. So um, first thing you have to do is make sure they know there's one, two, three, four, there's five in the five frame. So what you can do is go ahead and start having students make, make five um, and try to use two colored counters, okay? So you want it to look something like this. So we would go ahead and say, okay, how did we make five? We made five with three and with two. Um, one thing you wanna make sure is you always have your students work from left to right, and you don't want them to do sort of polka dots like this, okay? Polka dots can be very confusing to our brain, and so we wanna make sure we're using the right, um, the right, colors and chunks um, instead of doing things that will confuse them. So keep all the colors together and work left to right. So you may say to your students, okay, I want you to make five and they go ahead and they make it and they say three and two. You could have them go ahead and write down the combination if you want or just have them do that and orally share. Now this next component's really important. What you'll say is, okay, I want you to make five a different way. But what your students may do is they may want to clear off the card completely and then start over. And when you have two color counters, all you can say to your students is, okay, I want you to make five, I want you to make five a different way now. And have to make five by turning over one of the counters like this, or two of the counters. So they understand sort of that, that you know, when you're gaining a when you're gaining a red, you're losing a yellow and so on. Also, you can have them flip their cards. So for example, we have one red and four yellow. You can have them flip it, and now we've also taught the commutative property of one and four and four and one is the same thing. Remember, this is a concrete exposure. If you think about the CRE we talked about earlier, this is an introduction to this in a very concrete way. Okay, another way that you can work on five is using just these unifix cubes, and this is very easy, just called make and break. Go ahead and have them randomly break it. How is five made here? Five is made with two and three. How is five made here? We made five with four and one. So they're just randomly breaking it and you're realizing, okay, there's many different ways that you can make five. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is, um, and this is another concrete activity that you can do, and this is just doing finger flashes. So you could go ahead and flash three fingers to your class and say, okay, if I flash three fingers to you, you have to flash back to me what we need to make five. And so ready, you flash three and then they'll flash back two and you show them you should have flashed two back to me and that's correct. All right, if I flash four fingers to you, what would you have to flash back to me? You'd flash back to me one. And again, so whether we were using the five frame or the unifix cubes or even using fingers, these are all really concrete ways that you can do it. Now the next way that you can sort of scaffold it is just by doing something like this. Okay. If there's three here, and I know there's five total, how many have to be in my hand? And this is called hide and peek. And if you think about it, how many would be in my hand? It would be two. And what we're now doing is we're transitioning them into algebraic thinking, okay? We're doing a very basic way, uh, the most basic level of doing algebraic thinking. So let's do it this way now, ready? Okay, so if I have one there, how many have to be in my hand? Again, that would be four, and that would be, again, a way of doing algebraic thinking. So we took something that we we're doing con very concrete, and we used it as concrete, and now we're making it more abstract. We're scaffolding, making it a more abstract tool. All right, again, we're going to go ahead and go to our students now, and we're going to go ahead and say, I'm going to flash you a five frame, and there's going to be some missing. I want you to tell me how many there are. Ready? And again, they'll say how many were there? They'll say three. Now the important question that you ask is, well, how many more would we need to make five? So, and again, it would be two. Now your students are smart. They know that once you start doing it, that the answer is always gonna be the empty boxes. So then what you can do is you can go ahead and just screen it and say, okay, if this is three, and I know that there's five total, how many have to be under here? And there would be two under there, all right? And then over here, we'd say, okay, if there's four, how many have to be under here? And there would be one under there. So what we did, we're using again, we're using flashes of a five frame, which is something they're familiar with, and we're scaffolding it, get in and do that algebraic thinking, okay.
Now, if you remember from subitizing earlier too, what these are here is these are um, these are these are numbers, and if we open up, there's four. So if there's four here, and remember these come with your materials as well. So if there's four here, how many would be under here, and it would be one. Or you could go ahead and say if there's five total and there's one here, how many would be under the other one? It would be four. Okay, let's take a look at four. If there's three here, how many have to be under the other door? It would be one. All right, there's five. So if there's two here, how many have to be under this door? It would be three. And also, if you notice about this one, we're connecting they, they did the digit to it and realizing that, yeah, five can be made up a lot of different ways, four and one, three and two. And again, with this one, two, we have four and two, or four and two. And then the last way, and the way that you really want your students to learn this, is by giving them the digit cards. So you'd give them digit cards and say, okay, I wanna go ahead and I wanna match. I wanna find the matches to make five. Well, we know it's five and zero. We know it'd be four and one. And we know that it would be three and two, and these would be our matches for that. And again, that's a very concrete way that you can have your students um, your students working and, and making five. And they should know five like the back of their hand, not through you know something that's memorized, but through constant exposure and slowly doing it from concrete to representational to abstract.